The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, it's another beautiful Tuesday <laughs> and you're going to be having coffee with me, Anna, <laughs> me, Lynn, Shelly, for the next hour. And today, we are going to talk about businesses, and not just any kind of business, but local businesses. Um, and, you know, in the development world, sometimes businesses are seen as the enemy, as the polluters, right. as the whatever. Just the bad people in general, which isn't always necessarily the case. Because how, sorry, how, how it, they're seen as the bad They're bad just guys. seen as bad people. They're the bad guys because... Um, they're, they're supposed to be like the polluters and then there are a lot of human rights uh, issues yeah. about like like you unfair know, like, wages yeah unfair wages companies that right. renew your contract every six months right. so, ganyan. Um, but the flip side of that is that businesses drive the economy and they have the power they have the resources to to mobilize people um, for social change yeah. so I think it's yeah I think my Related to what you said, my mom made a very valid. My mom, hi mom. She made a very valid observation. Hi, mom. <laughs> hi, Corinne. Hi, mom. Hi, Tita. Hi, Tita. Um, she made a very valid observation about the Philippines now, which is before when she was growing up, she wanted to go to university because when she graduates, she wants to work for a big corporation, either local or multinational. But now there's a lot more focus on Filipinos being very comfortable or being bold enough to start their own businesses. Which what she was saying is that it's not that common during her time. Because it's like they were bred to be employees yeah. as opposed to now. They're more, like we're more, even young people are more excited or right. more open to being their own bosses and to trying new things. Even courses in universities are much different now than they were before, diba? Right? Usually, and when I was taking college, I was na that that's what kasagsagan ng nursing. Like, nurse ka, tapos yeah. ano, punta ka ng Canada. Or, you know, <laughs> Canada, so, true, yeah. um, But now we have uh, fashion technology, uh, sorry, clothing technology. We have uh, the rise of all the HR schools, mm -hmm. uh, culinary professions. So um, I think I'm not, I'm not a business, um, I, I'm not trained to academically to be a business person, but I, I, I noticed that grabe ang rice ng restaurants ngayon. Yeah. At saka kung ano-ano pang mga negosyo dyan. So, I, I, I think that's your mom is, ano, correct. <laughs> You're correct. Yay, <laughs> yeah, mom. And I think also, like, I remember how, I'm not sure if it's like three, yeah, three or four years ago, we're in social enterprise. Not a lot of people knew what a social enterprise was, even if it's actually something um, that people or other NGOs and other organizations have already been undertaking. For those of you who don't know, social enterprise, religious business, we're in a good principle or a sustainability principle is integrated into their business model. And yet now, so you see social enterprises popping up in the Philippines everywhere. And it's such a buzzword that everybody wants to be a social enterprise. Because I guess, like you said earlier, from being the bad guys, we are now seeing the potential of businesses to really scale the impact of doing good, not just in their communities, but all, all over the world. Academically speaking, though, because I'm wow. so academic. <laughs> Principal! <laughs> okay, diba merong ano yan? Hindi siya, you're, not, you're not just a social enterprise. Our guests should correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, na dahil lang meron kang mabuting ginagawa. Correct, because correct. businesses, that's by law. When we were first incorporating, nakasulat pala yon sa batas natin na you're supposed to actually give back to the country. Mm -hmm. So if that's if that's the only definition of a social enterprise, every business is a social enterprise. Or every register be. should it should be a social enterprise. But to really measure your impact as a social e enterprise, there's the triple what we call the triple bottom line. Mm -hmm. The profit uh sorry, People. economic um social, social and environmental. Yeah. Okay. So, do, yun yung basehan on how you are, uh, how well you are doing as a social enterprise. 
it. I agree, Shelly, because I think a lot of people now think that just because they employ poor people, they now it's can promote themselves enterprise. as a social yes. enterprise. Or dahil nagbibigay ka ng 10 pesos for every Correct, na binibigay mo so social, social enterprise, enterprise. Ka na. And which is sad because actually, those those business small businesses who employ poor people, the benefit for them is that they can actually employ those people at lower wages, which is not true. Uh -oh. And it goes against the principle yes. um, of what is a social enterprise. Fair trade and shit like that. Yeah, I oh. think like what you were mentioning earlier about the triple bottom lines, however, again, it, I think it's a relatively new phenomenon. Um, but what's good is that there are now a lot of movements who are making sure that there's a coherent Correct. standard. Um, and I know that Senator Bamakino is also trying to pass a bill. For that, yeah. in the U.S., there's what we call... Um, <laughs> Move on to it. Sorry, I'm going to move on to it. So, I'm passionate about it. In the States, it's really nice. Because for us, it's not just a new thing. Because there have been social enterprises for the longest time. But the thing is, it's not... Uh, pag ka nag-register ka as a business, hindi siya category. Eh. So, wala ka masyado. So, ngayon, yeah. category na siya. In the, wala yes. pa. In the states, in the there are states. Kung maga kailangan incentivize pa yung... And they're called B Corporation. Yeah. So, One day, that's going to happen in the Philippines. I, I, I believe I'm it should. I'm pretty confident that it will happen. Yes to Anna's confidence. <laughs> Now, we want to share with you five local businesses that we believe are innovative in different ways. So, for the first business, it is Ritmo. Ritmo Learning Lab is a product of Republica, uh, an NGO that leverages on music uh, as a tool for education. Okay, I remember the tagline of Ritmo. It's hacking education through music. <laughs> Cute. They have beauty. Ang daming aspects nitong Ritmo na talagang nakakatuwa. For one, they make, uh, they use local artists like Gary V, mm. uh, Jolina Magdangal and River Maya, and then there's um, Julian Taroha, and they're singing songs na Kaya kong bumilang ng sampu. Kaya ko, kaya ko. So it's a tool for parents uh, and teachers. Uh, it bridges, it, it creates teachable moments. Yan yung specifically nakasulat sa kanila. Um, Pwede so, ka maging ambassador ng oh, Ritmo. Yeah. <laughs> Text ko mamaya sila. <laughs> and you, what really amazes me about this is one of the founders, Caris Escueta, really just believe that music is a tool for education and it is, it is yeah, of, of the things that we remember diba so it's a risk what what i like about this business now ritmo is a business uh, as a social enterprise is that they took risks for it kasi imagine diba meron ng kalokohan na opm instead kalokohan because i don't believe it um <laughs> and then they did this pa created the business out of it and mm -hmm. merging education and music so available ang mga teaching tools na ito for parents with um, toddlers. I, I'm not sure about the age range eh, ng 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 tinuturuan. Ano ata grade school and Basic younger ed. Uh -oh. Basic education. That's correct. And then so it's available on iTunes and um, download. Uh, that's how they sustain their business. You buy yes, you the buy the songs. the songs and then meron siyang kasamang tool to help you teach it to your child. So, pagka oh, download yun ng coffee break from iTunes, it download yun. Yes! Oh, oh. You are not... So, oh. after the 10 downloads that we get weekly, uh -oh. then they can... Ano, they can download it. Uh -oh. <laughs> there. Okay. Next! Okay, this is um, uh, Dolls from Antil Fabric Gallery, which is social enterprise based in Cebu. Do you want to talk about Antil? I mean, ko na gulat ako sa green, no? <laughs> Okay, I got this photo Parang in the green screen. <laughs> in the spirit of Wicked, the musical. Right. And then they're coming here, so I wanted to feature that. I'm, I'm not sure part of Wicked, although I wish I were. Me also. Um, so anyway, the social enterprise is one of my favorite ones because it merges um, living traditions into pop culture. So this is one of their products. These are called the, the, the home dolls. And they're so famous, and I just... Um, Anna Malotta, who owns um, Human. Um, Human Nature, said that they're because they carry these dolls. And then she told the founder, Anya, that they're so famous, these dolls, because now kids don't have huggable toys anymore. 
No That's way. That's right. Diba? Yeah. iPad na, no? iPad na. Yeah. Or iPad. Wala ko mag-iisa. No, but yeah, so that's one of the reasons why this... So, stuff toys, it's not Uso anymore? Yeah, not so much. Wow. So, so this is one so of their products. My son does not have a stuff toy. Yeah, there. Um, so, this is one of their products, and they have communities in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Um, um, indigenous, rural, and urban, so it's cross-cutting in, yeah. in many different ways. And this is made by the community in Cebu, made of scrap materials. And then the other products are these beautiful bags Very nice. and other accessories where they use um, traditional um, woven textiles. And what Anya aims for Antil is for, you know, these costumes, and she refuses to call them costumes, to, to integrate them into our daily lives through nga, these products that we use. And they're beautiful products. I mean, every time I go abroad and I have like some kind of big speaking engagement, I always try to have like anthill right. clothes made because it's they're beautiful. Yeah. And and by tailoring them into a design that you want, then it, it becomes cool and hip. And it's also the communities, teaching the communities to love it. Because for them, it's like, Oh well, Britney Spears isn't wearing it, so it's not cool. You mga ganon. So, mm -hmm. but if they see it in magazines, then they realize, oh, there's value pala to what we do. So there. Next, Grab Taxi, Shelly. Ako ba to? Okay. <laughs> Grab Taxi is an app that has been helping us. Uh, us pedestrians, like yes, me. commuters. <laughs> oh, oh, commute. Kasi talaga naman ang hirap hirap kumuha na. Diba? Laki-laki pa nga ng siyangko. Tapos, <laughs> nag, yung pumapara ka ng taxi. Tapos, tas umuulan. Umuulan. I would think maaawa yung mga taxi driver. Ay, hindi. Hindi. <laughs> Oo. <laughs> Nananawagan kami sa mga taxi driver. Tapos, kung nakikimamata sila, hindi eh, naman sa nanghahamak po ako ng mga taxi drivers. Pero paminsan, namimili kasi talaga uh, sila. Diba? Which is actually against the law. Yeah. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's another episode. Yes. So, <laughs> the things against the law. Okay. And then, um, Yun, so itong Grab Taxi, it's an app that you can download for free and then you can, pag mag-encode ka, kunyari nandito ka ngayon sa Beyond the Box, Makati, I lalagay mo kung saan ka pipick up in, and then lalagay mo kung saan ka papunta and then it will automatically flag uh, taxi drivers within your area. And then one of them will choose to accept, di ba? Yes, oo, may mga ganun, basta ang galing. May phone sila, tapos parang it says there, okay, Pick up in yes. beyond the box. Accept. So, pag inaccept nila, it means that they're the ones na in charge of paying yes. off the passenger. So cool. It's so awesome. And from what I know, there's also a tracker. Mm. Ah, talaga. Yeah. Um, it will show you. Because nga yung parang hindi ka ginagago ng route, yeah, diba? yeah. So it will show you the where where you're passing and oh, if it's like legit. Kasi ang dami na rin naman lately, no? Ang daming kwento about uh, those who... Mga are... modus operandi yes. na... And then over the weekend, what I was very amused with is uh, Grab Taxi offered free pickup and delivery of your donations. Wow. wow! Yes, for the victims of Yolanda. So, kanina, meron kasi kaming ipapadalang boxes of medicines. Tumawag kami, sabi namin, lampas na ng, lampas na ng weekend. So, we're sure that you're not, um, you're not delivering for free. We're willing to pay if you can just help us Wala kasing sasama dun sa donations. Uh, eh. yeah. If you can help us make sure. So, I'm sure, oh, ano na lang, sila daw yung mag arrange I just need to uh, encode that we are looking for pickup para ma-flag yung mga taxi drivers around the area. So, that Galing. was really wonderful of them. Good job. What I like about this app, business-wise, is that it has, it, it leverages on convenience. So, yun yung binibenta mo, eh, convenience. Uh, for an additional 70 pesos, and Which, 50 pesos if you're a Globe subscriber. I, I believe so. <laughs> okay. So, yun, for, for an additional 70 pesos, it rids you of the hassle of having to line up or wait right. for a driver. So, if if you're thinking of starting a business, think of what will be convenient for, for your people. customers. Yes. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, so this is mine. I really love this. It's called Kids Yoga Philippines. And I'm it's, so shalang ng business. <laughs> it's an urban ashram. And the one I saw, I actually got to see it in High Street and in Brixton, which are two branches of urban ashram for now. Um, what I love about Kids Yoga is that it, like, it gives your children a chance to experience the benefits if you're a yogi if you're a yogi or a yoga practitioner, the same benefits that you get as an adult, it actually also applies to children. And they saw that there's an opportunity um, for parents who want to extend those benefits to their kids as well. So they opened up kids' yoga. And 
I've seen a session because they invited Manamiga students to come and participate. And you know, it's so fun. They make it so fun because they wear costumes and then instead of sun saltation, like, or uh, smell the flowers, so you go down. Yeah, you <laughs> know, No, but they, they have Fast. ones and then. Um, they play the quiet game like the one I saw. Because it's part of it is meditation. Of course, yeah. you can't expect five-year-olds, yeah, six-year-olds yeah. to do meditation. So what they did was, parang they passed out little bells, and then they're supposed to pass it to the other person without it making a sound. Uh, so they made it a game. Yeah, yeah so like bells. So you pass mo yung bell dun sa katabi mo without me. The challenge is it can't make a sound. So the kids were so quiet and. Cute. Then you so it it they really found a way to tailor it. Yung to muto na po phone ni Lin sa Manila. Okay, They found a way to tailor it to the to the ages of the children like that they're catering to. And I again I like it. I think it's very innovative. Yeah. They're not the only um, institution here or business offering this, but. I've seen because they bring in teachers. They, the one I saw, they brought in a teacher from Japan. What I like, guys, is that they were, they saw a need, they saw right. a demand for it, and they knew it's a service they could offer, and they jumped in it. And so now they have the Kids Yoga Philippines. So for those wanting to start the business, maybe look at the niche, what what market you can cater to. It can be as specific as Kenyan na kids, si yeah. uh, kids, and na merong mothers who are into wellness, yeah. wellness and yoga. Na. <laughs> So and then do it well. Don't just don't just serve them. Na ito ito na po yung product namin. Katulad ngayon sinabi ni Lynn, meron silang mga activities that make sure that they are ahead of the rest perhaps. Right. Yun lang. Okay. <laughs> and finally, yes, Thread365. So this is one of my favorite um, local businesses. It was just it was launched in October. And I love this because a it, launch too. Yeah, it's a world class for me. It's world class basics. Um, so you have your plain t-shirts in gray, black, white, navy, blue, um, and your long sleeves and your tank tops. And it's, I mean, it sounds so simple, but actually... But that's what Gap is. And look at Gap. Yeah. Exactly. Or Uniqlo. Uniqlo. Muji. Or Muji, Banana Republic, all of these things that, you know, you go in and because you want the simple things. Right. You know, you want... Timeless classic basics. Dahil sabi nila, don't mess with success. <laughs> Wait, where do you work? Where can you buy? Where can you buy? Um, this is available <laughs> online, so you can order it online. Um, and Wait, sorry. Sabi niya phone ko kay Shelly pala. I stand corrected. I apologize to all of you. That's mine. And you know, this is also great because it's handled. I mean, the shirts are all well made. That's you know, right. and the cotton that they use is organic cotton, which of course for me matters because it has less so impact. So is it made here? Inter- yes, it's made here by by Filipinos. Oh, um, nice. So yes, it's made here by Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> like import the Chinese. Okay, but but yeah. So possible one. <laughs> so so there. Um, www. Thread365.com So you can order your basics there. Um, and when we return, we're going to talk about uh, um, businesses in the Philippines and tips for people. Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks by yes. two beautiful women. Beautiful inside out. So we'll be seeing you in a bit and we'll be um, talking about um, their, their current initiatives and share their own experience mm-hmm. about putting up their own business so you can right. benefit from it also if you're interested. If you have questions, please tweet us. That's Coffee Break NMF so that we can, be, we can ask them and we can hear from them on what their advice is for you. See you in a bit. See you. Hi. They say nothing in this world is free and for the most part that's true. But here at NMF Network, all shows are indeed 100% free. And as an added feature, you have the option to subscribe to all your favorite programs, also at no charge. Why should you subscribe? By subscribing, you no longer have the hassle of delays when you stream the program. You also don't need to keep checking our site to see if your favorite programs are up because they'll automatically be uploaded to your device as soon as it's available. Here's how to do it. For those people with Apple mobile devices, First, you need to download the podcast app. Once you've downloaded the podcast app, open it. And you should be taken to the featured page. Now, you look for the store button. Hit the store button, and after doing that, 
hit the search button. Put your cursor on it and type New Media Factory. All our shows should automatically appear. Pick your favorite or favorites. Open it and hit subscribe. And that's it. You're done. Congratulations and welcome to the New Media Factory family. You guys are familiar with the with the game Chubby Bunny, but um, Ch what's like? Have you ever played Chubby Bunny before? No. You put a marshmallow in your mouth. You say Chubby Bunny. And you keep putting it in your mouth. And you okay. keep saying Chubby Bunny. Okay. Whoever gets it the most in their mouth wins. But we're not gonna say Chubby Bunny. We're gonna say we're gonna have a conversation. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you, okay, gonna ba? Okay. And you're gonna be like, okay, na, okay, na. Okay. 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 Yeah. Go. Two at a time? Okay, I'll do two at a time. Okay, can I What? Okay, no, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it. Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, can I Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, no, okay, no. What you've been missing on the factory. Now we're gonna show you guys the new beta that just came out yesterday. It's God of War Ascension, the private beta for and PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus. Let's watch it, right? It's nice it's, and we can play already. Yes. Yep. There you go. And perfect <laughs> timing. <laughs> perfect timing. <laughs> Well, before that, I was, I was kicking ass. <laughs> so go with the theme of the show, How Not To Play. It's Robot Rice and Friends with Alfonso Martinez, Mickey Han, and Nigel Zalameo. Fridays, 6 to 7 p.m. Only here on The Fact. And we're back! Um, today, we're very lucky to have these inspiring ladies with us. So we have Dan, who is the maestro of Homegrown, and she's also the managing director of Full Suite. And Rachel Davis, who is the culture curator of Homegrown. And Homegrown is. Say your whole name. Danya Tenchai. Danella Yukonella Yukonella You can follow her on Twitter too. Yeah, their Twitter names are gonna pop out in a bit. Um, but anyway, Homegrown is a digital platform that supports, um, and they also have events um, that support small, medium enterprises and local startups. Mm -hmm. So, do you, could you share how it started? Like, what inspired you to, to right. start it? Actually, it was a it was an encounter, an experience with another media company that wasn't so good. This is part of not be named. Media okay. Who shall not be named? <laughs> no, and so one day I said, oh, I'm going to start a magazine. Why? Well, you approached them because you had that idea. No, no, no. Um, I was interviewed for something. Ah, uh, I it think was, I know this. Okay. And, then, so and, then. It, and it fell yes. flat on its face. The whole experience was so uninspiring. And you know, when you're an entrepreneur, I think right. all of you guys can attest for this stuff. You're so excited to share your story and right. you're so proud and you want it. And then when they're, they're so uninspired to talk about you, yeah. they yeah. couldn't care less. Yeah. So it, it was so... Uh, Unnerving, and so I thought, you know, that's not right. Everyone deserves their story told well. Yes. Right. Um, whether they're interviewing you, whether it's being written already, uh, or you're being interviewed, whatnot. So, done. And so now it's okay. One day we started a magazine. <laughs> and then it just snowballed, and then we yeah. spoke to you. Yeah. Like, before yeah. I even spoke to you. Yeah. And then how about did it? you get involved? Well, um, one of our business partner, partners, Chessa, she asked a friend of hers to come on as the managing editor. Um, and she couldn't do it, so she recommended me. So I sat down with Danella and Chessa for an interview. And before we knew it, we had it incorporated. Was real. <laughs> <laughs> I, be I became Homegrown's first ink slinger. Yeah. And wow. what, that's what we call the managing editor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, yeah, then it just became this thing that took on a life of its own. And we were like, whoa, how did we get here? <laughs> right. And how has the reception been so far? Very good. Uh, it's the online magazine is a year old in November. It was a year old in November. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, very good. You know, we grew, we've grown organically. We've had an event every month just to celebrate different aspects or, or work on different aspects of startups, entrepreneurship, freelancing. And it's been okay. Uh, let's see, we've had fiestas to, to, yeah, we um, had our mm -hmm. Filipino fiesta. 
and we had something with the kids last week. Yes, this past Sunday. Last Sunday we had a kiddopreneur workshop. So, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cool! Inspiring children to start thinking about entrepreneurship, yeah. and, uh, which is know. something very needed, especially nowadays, yeah. right? And we partnered with someone who already has something. Uh, Mikey Rakes, kiddopreneur, mm -hmm. the bazaar. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Has yeah. So instead right. of you know kind of doing Creating it all our own, own yes, we just partnered with her to do that. The, the workshop part. The bazaar is happening at the end of this month. Uh, then we have a regular skill building workshop called the homies huddle which is really to help yeah startups entrepreneurs freelancers build their soft skills because yeah like you said you don't always go to school for it so right. you know you're learning mm -hmm. along the way you might not be good at presenting or selling right. or whatnot you just have your idea so how do we help you, you know, did you have any background with at all in magazine in, in publishing, publishing or um in media sales and in journalism for okay. me uh, but you um, for me, um, yes, I, I used to write for magazines, and I also was in online publishing for a while. Yeah. So, what did you guys and what would be your the roadblocks you encountered when you were putting up the the business? Or because this is an innovative idea, right? And so it must have been hard to. I mean, I'm sure you had your share of challenges, like getting it off the ground. Um, so, what has been the biggest challenge so far, and how did you guys like overcome that? Funding is actually still a, yeah, a funding. Major thing. Funding oh my because God. <laughs> uh, because it is a new concept, right. and it's a new concept in the Philippines especially. Right. Right. It's really hard to sell the idea to potential sponsors because right. we are a media company. It's still sponsorship that's our business model, uh, and trying to sell the idea of not advertising but sponsored content is different. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Traditional but companies that we're approaching don't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the younger employees get it and they're really excited about it. But as you go up the chain, right. you know, the yeah. people who actually approve mm. these things are more are, traditional. Right, and yeah. they don't quite, they're not quite there yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, we've been very fortunate in terms of putting content together that our editorial team has been very good. And mm -hmm. even yeah. the contributors, we did start out with a larger pool in the very beginning of contributors. And right, then, our, our first issue, which was a which was November, December 2012, we had, I think, 40 articles go out. Wow! Because, so we, yeah, like, yeah, wow. Wow. <laughs> because we really wanted to populate the site. Right. 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 We didn't want oh, to start with this tiny little chiquilla course, site, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah so... Right. I love how homegrown is very... It provides an enabling um, environment for entrepreneurs. And I think this is what is very important for businesses. Now you provide value to others. What what would your this is one question that came in. Oh, just hold on. Cool. Yeah, so we have okay. questions from the our real questions. Uh, <laughs> you guys so if you can give an advice to someone who's asking, since I'm sure maybe you've done an article on this, do you think quitting my day job is all right to get started on my bright business idea? Well, okay. <laughs> I would suggest you log on to homegrown.p <laughs> and you read the, the article by Peter Kauton, which is, should I quit my day job? Um, because he highlights it very well. Um, there are rules he gives on how much you should have in your bank account, how much you actually spend on That's yourself so a month. That's so specific. Yeah, um, super. And he, he's really specific. It's down to, can you support yourself for six months to a year oh. without your day job? Uh -huh. So I'm that you can no. dedicate no. <laughs> no, you <laughs> cannot dedicate your time so to good. this passion yeah. project. I'm and then he no. suggests, and then there's another article also by Peter. So it was kind of a series. He suggests so how you can <laughs> divide your time between your day job and your passion project, you know, to yeah. kind of balance everything out if you can't afford to quit your day job yet. Right. He's, he gives practical advice because he's gone, gone through it himself. And his blog is called One, One Great, Great Leap. Leap. Uh -huh. uh, so it's all about, he, okay. he really advocates taking the leap, but right. doing it practically. See the right. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. I've never met him. That's how people have this guy. Yeah. He's also a I great hope. speaker. <laughs> he's got <laughs> monthly talks, actually. Right. Or no, not talk. He calls them coffee, open coffees. And so everyone meets up. And you actually practice pitching your idea. Okay, that's the group. so cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, thank you for that. And please log on to homegrown.ph. Because yun yung mga bagay na hindi mo usually makukuha from ano eh, from usual advice. So you think I should quit? Alam mo tanshahin mo muna. Pero ito nakalagay dito exactly how much you should have in your bank account. Yes. And, then, and also when you ask people that, sometimes they just say like, 
No, you should follow your heart. Just do it. Ito to oy. Ewan ako para mga pera, de ba? Ba. So this is very realistic. Yeah. I think that's the the keyword. And one thing I love about homegrown is that it simplifies the business. Um, process in you know how like in the Philippines if you want to register a business or if you want to start a business you have to go through so much bureaucracy right. and in in homegrown they try to, they come up with articles you know creating infographics or giving tips on on things like that because it's super important right. when I was starting when I registered my um, business analysis enterprises <laughs> I, I asked for Dan's help because I couldn't. I didn't know that you had to register here, and then you have the barangay permit, and then you have the municipal permit, and it's just really difficult. And and you know, if a lot of people read homegrown, then it would be easier for yeah. them because you would understand the bigger picture of, of that. And it's great that you brought that up because the <laughs> next question okay. is: Wow, well, segue. Are there government benefits for for small startups? Would you know if there are? You know, in fact, I think the DTI has certain um, promo programs, rather, but they're, it's mainly for the grassroots and really localized, you know, a slightly different industry, I think, industries from what we're used to right. nowadays. So much more in the provinces. They do, um, right. I know a few weeks, no, a few months ago, they talked about their, um, the, oh my gosh, what do you call those things? The wagon. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> They were roaming. <laughs> they had the games coming a little early. Um, caravans. There, caravans. Yes. Good job, good job. Yes. <laughs> they've got caravans and they really teach um, them step by step. But in terms of tax breaks or anything like right. that, I don't think we're there yet. So, mm -hmm. similar to what you were saying earlier, Walapa, but uh -oh. hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get, get there, there soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So work for it now. Yeah. <laughs> I think work we have for to it. Show. Be patient. Yeah. Okay. And then the next is, um, how do I charge for my products? Do I scan the market or do I charge based on what I feel I should earn? Oh, okay. I think it's very important for every starting a uh, startup owner to do market research because you can't enter the market without knowing if there's a market for you. Right. Okay, don't, don't do it. it. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, um, so I would say do market research. Definitely look at the other products out there if you, there are similar products. And then um, there is a formula for how to charge for your product, what it costs you to make it, and then there's a formula that will give you the wholesale price, and there's a formula that will give you the um, su suggested retail price. And they you have do an have article. an article on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that said, right. like you were saying, I mean, sometimes you do take that leap like a Steve Jobs where if you know in your gut that it, it costs a certain amount. I think, no, she said gut, not heart. Gut, <laughs> it's a gut feel. Like yeah, yeah, no, well, that's what I believe. But, right, I mean, if you know the value of it, sometimes it does take time for people to... to um, comprehend or to appreciate it. I, I honestly believe in that. So yeah, sometimes you've got to stick it out as long as you can also. The, just um, related related to that, I read a quote. Um, I think it's by Henry Ford. It's by Henry Ford. Um, the founder right. Ford. And he said, if That's I had right. asked my consumers what they yes. wanted, they would have asked me for a faster horse. I did read that recently. Yeah, right? Yeah. I don't know where I read it. Yeah. Well, I'm homegrown. I know. <laughs> Because earlier we were talking about products, about how to charge for products. What about services? Because that's a little bit more Especially for the consultants. Yeah. It was like us, the three yeah. of us, are... We all we have service yeah, yeah. We, like We write or do communications mm -hmm. or you have like your education business consultancy. Right. I sing. So, oh. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, she does. <laughs> See, I think same thing. There's certain basic costs that you can calculate right. for, and then you can add things like your experience, education, right. um, training, if it's singing, you know. <laughs> oh, and also, like it, you mentioned writing. Yeah. So there is a standard, for example, for freelance writers. So you can also look at that, right? And if you think you're just this amazingly fabulous writer who is super experienced, so you can charge more, then you can. But yeah. if you're okay or you're pretty much like everyone else, then you you'll have to charge the same as everyone else. Yeah. Parang ang hirap i-quantify ng amazingly talented writer. Is that any... Pulitzer Prize? Should you... I think I also believe that you should 
charge according to your skills. Mm -hmm. But is there well, a way to kunyari, discern na kung tatlong years ka nang nagtatrabaho doing this, if you've done this, then maybe you can add more or laban lang, magaling ako, therefore, 7 well, million you know, per article. Um, we, I don't know if you guys have gotten a chance to watch a, a, a video we did on Homegrown. It's called, What's Your Entrepreneur Story? Oh, yeah. And Wango Galiaga, who was in the video, said something I thought was really great and really important. And he said, never undervalue yourself mm -hmm. and never undervalue your work. Yeah. So if you know what you can bring to the table and you know that it's worth this, yeah. then price it at that. I have a... Sorry, no, you no, were no. going to say something. I was just going to say, I mean, I think you'll also feel it. If 100% people are saying, sorry, it's not worth it, then okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, what, uh, that's your market <laughs> research too, right? was evidence-based. <laughs> 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 I have a question, um, and I think this applies to the three of us. Tayo pa rin yung <laughs> okay, so um, for example, you're because we're like we we all have we have specific stories to share, and mm -hmm. we're often asked to share that story. So we are they get us as speakers for conferences, mm -hmm. seminars, etc. And for me, before I never wanted to charge because it's an opportunity for me to share my advocacy. But what I notice is that sometimes there are corporation like not the organizations who charge an arm and a leg. To hear For shitty speakers. To hear people <laughs> just putting <yeah>. it <laughs> To hear people speak and but then the speakers get anything, but they recharge so much. And I'm like, oh. where's the like so how do you bring it up? How do you say, well, you know what? I think like I mean it's okay for me to share my story to to like in a youth organization. Right. Right. We're right. not recharging anything and they wanna be I guess they wanna hear a story that could inspire them to do to start an initiative. But mm -hmm. where do you draw where where do you draw the line, right? Like there, there are people who tend to abuse the um Okay, I think that the next time you're asked for a speaking engagement, you can ask the organizers if it is an idea sharing mm -hmm. engagement or if it is an official in speaking engagement. Because if it's idea sharing, that means they can't charge the crowd. Because okay. you're all there to learn to from learn each other. Oh, okay. walang makakalamang. Hindi pwedeng no one's making money off of it. Oh, right, so you're not working for free, basically. Right. Okay. right, but if they are going to charge, then you are entitled to a hmm. part of that. Or you give them your fee. That's and then that's yeah. how they're going to base their oh, what they're charging the helpful. crowd. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> so I guess Lin Pinubu will no longer be receiving <laughs> that <Sorry. size> location. <laughs> Like for example, they charge a participant like three thousand. No, mahal like fifteen to eighteen thousand. Because they, get, oh my God. they <laughs> get international ah, okay. participants oh, yeah. and they pay fifteen to eighteen thousand. But that doesn't pa include accommodations and stuff. And I'm like, wow. why are they I just charging no. you so much? <laughs> I just you, say no. Yeah. I'm like, you have to. Yeah. Hindi kasi iba naman. Like I know of speakers who yun talaga yung trabaho. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. So. In, um, they are also charging for the trainings, David. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Psychosocial, whatever, into their speeches, then, syempre, mag charge rin sila mm -hmm. for that. Pero kung wala lang na. Hindi ito yeah. organizing body yung nagre charge, hindi yung speakers. Ah. Pero yung speakers libre. Ah. Yeah, no, they're my charge. Come yeah. Charge. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you need to charge. Rachel. <laughs> Idea sharing. <laughs> no. Because you forgot that. No. You email me. It has to be your time. Like, what's your time? Right. Worth? You right. Know, especially when you're busy mm -hmm. educating kids. You know, time away from the school right. yeah. costs something. That's right. Right. Yeah. So what for you? Before we move on to our game, oh we're playing games again. <laughs> um, the what the, the best? best advice you've been given and worst advice you've been given oh, wow. for business for a start. worst because there are like yeah. people like for me follow your heart is not a good enough advice. Yeah. Yeah. wing it ayan <laughs> that's a shit yet <laughs> go go go. let's do this ad hoc uh -oh. yeah no, no. <laughs> no. oh yeah hindi ako ipinatanong ni Ana so let's go um wow i listen to her person that's so unfair. Um, well, I know the a good piece of okay, advice. Maybe not ahead. the best, but um, I work well. I work with my dad, and I think an interesting piece of advice that he told me was, 
he compared being a boss to being a helicopter. <laughs> kind of like, because you have to be able to look up from above you know, and, and see where things are, to, you know, kind of take a break from the details yeah. because then you can direct people properly and then you've got to also be able to look at details. Yeah. So you've got to have that... Go um, up and down. Yeah, mobility, agility to go up and down. So that was really interesting because sometimes you get yeah. really sucked into a problem, to spreadsheets, yeah. into whatnot, and to people problems and you just have to remove yourself because, wait a second, are you... It, first of all, is it still your responsibility? Are you micromanaging? That right, type of thing. Yeah, so yeah. that was one really p interesting piece of advice for me um, the worst one went about Wait, while, you, while you're on it because you mentioned that you were working with your dad yeah. and a lot of people work in family businesses mm -hmm. um, do you have any advice to share about that because like me and like my dad and I tried to work with each other and it yeah. just didn't work so but for some people <laughs> it could yeah so like um, you've been working with your dad for a long time so how did that um, your parents won't change <laughs> I'm telling you now, they will not change. And you... <laughs> no, but it's true. It's, it's all true. Had. Oh my god! So it's kind of someone to told me that. Uh, someone told me that when I graduated. So you, for me, you have to maneuver around them. Um, mm -hmm. Whether you know, I think if you're lucky, if you can stand up to them and say you disagree, you mm -hmm. can have your disagreements. Um, and if you can't have disagreements, I'm, I don't know what to do really. But point is, you have to realize yes, you're the younger person here. Um, you're the child here yeah. and what when they say something it is coming from experience whether That's it's right. right or wrong oh, so there is wisdom there, in it. there yeah. still is whether it's dated or not yeah mm -hmm. I guess so yeah so, so your parents won't change but you can you can either get out of that business <laughs> yeah. Yeah. or um, adjust if, if, adjust yeah. if you find that the wisdom that they're applying is dated then maybe you can yeah. also find ways to tell them that that major it can be a good thing, your yeah. parents won't change and aren't you happy they won't. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. And how about you Rachel? Do you have okay, um, I like what you said about, well I like that you asked about worst advice. Um, I don't know if I've ever been given, if I can say this is the worst advice ever. But I do like the question because I believe, well, in Homegrown, we also believe in failure stories. We don't yes, just celebrate yes. success. success yeah. we, we, you know, we visit failure right. and mm -hmm. see where you can learn from that. So I do agree that a lot of these motivational quotes, although they make you feel good and they do get you going sometimes <laughs> yeah, when you yeah. need a, that pick-me-up, um, sometimes it's very incomplete. Mm -hmm. So I think some of those things are maybe not the worst, but you shouldn't always listen to them. And in line with that, I think some of the best advice I ever got is um, like learn from your mistakes, know when what you're doing is not working. Right. Mm. And you don't have to change the goal, but you probably have to change the plan. Right. Okay. So I like that. I know. Gusto ko isulat. Ipapa cross stitch ko yun sa tropelo. Ipo post post ko yung ano podcast sa sulat ko. I recently um got certified as an yes nag share as a neurolinguistic practitioner. You are guest. One of the one of the presuppositions they believe is that failure is feedback. So kung bakit yun? That's wonderful. Pwede rin yung cross stitch sa tropelo. Failure is feedback. I had some mug. Danny, what's your worst? Though? What's the worst advice you've ever received? Yun din, your parents will change. And then, that, your parents will change. <laughs> change. Ah, worst advice. Um, um, um. You know what? Maybe it's lack of feedback. Uh, and, and, and not looking for it. So, oh, yeah. because you're scared of the truth. Right. So you're That's super you're important. Gonna, you know, no, I'm going to do it. Like, knowing when it's not working. It's not working. Yeah. And you're just like, Keep going. So and maybe it's believe the dream. <laughs> of training to look for feedback. Yeah. And also, so then I guess it's yeah. it's it means more to you because you're the boss. So people are probably scared of like saying, "Ma'am, yeah. wag na." Ama <laughs> na. <laughs> yeah. Ma'am, ma'am, para para tempera. Yeah. So so it's well, good that you, you have that. Is it, it? I think it's a culture. Eh? Like ako na hiya ako. Yeah. Um. Do you think it's ego or is it? Yeah, or it's. I, I don't. I think it's somewhere a there of its own in our culture that yeah. Hiya. Yeah, we have higher respect for authority, right? Yeah. So it's not natural for us to, to give, and at the same to give 
kumbaga negative. Difficult right. feedback. Yeah. Difficult or feedback. constructive. Constructive. Yun na lang. Yeah. Right. Wag naman negative. Right. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna play a game. Okay. Right. Okay, so our charades for this week is... Lynn, you wanna... Famous people who succeeded in business. So they can be men or we- mm-hmm. women. And it's either local, local or international. Or local and international. Are we acting? Yeah. Okay. I will be acting on behalf of our guests. Okay. okay. Yeah. And Lynn will be acting for Shelly and Pico. Okay. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Pico finally you'll be in the winning team. <laughs> wow. I just so medyo nag-isip kami ng ibang game for the ano, for the for coffee break and ang isa sa mga naisip ni Lynn ay musical chairs si Pico daw yung kukuha. Like so <laughs> para sa ratings, no? <laughs> Lahat na lang. Okay, so... Okay, so the rule of the charades is that... It's not really charades. Yeah, it's, it's impersonation. Yeah, but okay. we can't, for example, if you're Steve Jobs, if you pick Steve Jobs, you can't say, I am the founder of Apple. So yeah. yeah so if you have to describe it through other ways. But you can right. say, stay foolish, ganun. Oh, ganun. Yeah. Stay foolish. So oh, you no, can't mention okay. the product. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, All right. ready? So, one minute. Go. Are you first? Okay, go. I'm a timer. Wait, wait, wait. I'm a timer. Now. Okay. 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 I was one of the f- first people in the computer Biggest. industry. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, Pico, you're not helping. Hindi ka kakandungan next time. Okay. Uh, I'm one of the youngest billionaires of this innovative. Mark Zuckerberg! Yay! Good job! Oh my god, there's pressure now. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm one of the famous African American women. I have my own magazine, my oh, own bro. talk show. I'm going to go. Five seconds. Okay, Martha Stewart. Wala pa. <laughs> okay, time's up. Okay. Balik mo na lang. Okay, balik na. Okay, here's the timer. Okay, okay go team. Let's go. Team homegrown. We have a big get. Three, four, four. four. Okay, 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 we can do this. We can do this. Ah, I have so many malls around the Philippines. Uh, Henry C. Okay. Um, oh, I have. I am the first female comedian writer. Of- Tina Fey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. So you focus person. I have so many companies: electric, water. Um, MVP. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're gonna win. Um. Who's this? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Sorry, don't tell me. Okay, the first name: <laughs> Black and the Pussycats. Josie. Yeah, last name is Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Wait, that? She's a Filipino designer. She's amazing. Not she. Not she. Not she. Okay. What? Okay. Josie and Atari. We're tied. Are we tied? They they got four in forty three seconds. Woo! We win. Oh well, Pico still on the losing team. Pico, my ballot. Okay, so thank you, Dan and Rachel, for thank joining you. us. Thank you for having um, us. Do you want to share the details of the event that you have um, at the end of the month? Oh right, I was telling um, Anna earlier about December. Right. So- you want to say? Go ahead. Oh, okay, <laughs> right. We're, we're, okay, we're having a very special event. We can't divulge all the details just yet. Wow. wow. It's, it's, really, it's, it's an event. It's an event. <laughs> yes. Um, it's going to be on December 11th. Um, so we'll probably put out something by the end of the week. And we'd like to invite a lot of people to, if you cannot come to the event, then you can um, maybe come to um, the follow-up to the event because it's going to wow. be a long-term wow. thing. But that's a big, okay. I mean, <laughs> So it's a big event. It's on December 11th. It's our follow-up. Right. right. Uh, well, okay. In the spirit of what's been happening in the Philippines, <laughs> and in the spirit of homegrown business and you know nation building, we felt that our role as a digital public an online digital publication about business was really to help. Um, the survivors of the disasters kind of recuperate their lives. So we want to do something related to sustainable livelihood. Okay. Um, so we're trying to get things together because you know a lot of people are already doing things to rescue emergency mission, yeah, relief, right. relief packing. Yeah. So that's fine and it's great. And but 
you know, I think we're better at what we do, you know. Yeah, we're we're thinking of the after. Yeah. yeah. Which is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's gonna be around that. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. So we, yes. we've December replaced 11th. our Christmas party with this. Yes. <laughs> okay, so December 11, and we will definitely be tweeting about this event when the details, details are final and yeah. not so. Um, For so, now, so. you can log on to homegrown.ph and, and follow them on Twitter at homegrownph. <laughs> So I open in the black. <laughs> okay, so thank you again. Thank, thank you, you for guys. joining us, and we'll always be here to, um, you know, share whatever you to guys. Be your friends. <laughs> but I <don't> <laughs> dedication. Lean on me when you're not strong. <laughs> okay, bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.